Please make him welcome, delegates. Doug. Senator Doug Cameron. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks, Stuart. And could I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to the elders, uh, past and present. Look, I've been really fortunate to be given uh, a portfolio which is skills, uh, apprenticeships, and. Uh, and uh, vocational education generally. It's really uh, a, a good uh, portfolio because it's a portfolio that we can do so much to help so many people. And part of that portfolio is specific allocation for TAFE. And uh, as TAFE delegates, I can't tell you any more than you know yourself about the decimation that's been taking place in TAFE networks across this country. I, my only qualifications are a vocational education qualification. I've got uh, a, a city and guilds uh, for, uh, for tool making and fitting and machining. Uh, that's my qualification. I've got to tell you, it can't be a bad qualification because I don't feel the least bit uh, intimidated by any of those liberal and, and national Ponces that sit across from me uh, every day in the Senate, and I don't feel any intimidation uh, from any of the public servants that sit there. I hated school. You know, school was hopeless for me. All I wanted to do was get out and get an apprenticeship, and fortunately in those days, for people like me that weren't very good at school, apprenticeships were available. It's a different ball game now for young kids, and, uh, and really hard. But you know, I couldn't understand why I had to, had to you know, learn geometry and algebra and any of those issues uh, because they didn't relate to me in a practical way. But when I got my apprenticeship and went to the equivalent of TAFE in the UK, I understood that you had to learn algebra, you had to be across geometry you had, because you couldn't do your work if you didn't understand the principles that apply there. So I... Um, I was fortunate enough to, that TAFE actually kick-started my you know, sort of capacity to understand these issues and have a thirst for knowledge and, and, and take me you know, further down the line. The other important area for me was my work as a, a, a delegate and the uh, training I got as a delegate when I first came here at the Clyde Cameron College, which is many years ago, was, which is a disgrace that I ended up uh, being closed down. But, you know, a combination of my technical training, uh, my training politically at the Clyde Cameron College uh, helped me to be able to go and, and do, do my work on behalf of working class people in this country uh, generally. So these are big issues for me, the issue of TAFE. And if you look at the American system where they called, you know, where, where if you were doing an apprenticeship, you basically call, was called following Joe around. You followed a tradesperson around, you know, and hoped that you picked up the skills. And most of the skills were focused at the enterprise level. I uh, take the view that uh, if you're doing an apprenticeship, uh, and I'm only talking about apprenticeships here, and I know that's not the bulk of the work in TAFE at the moment, but it's still an important part of TAFE. TAFE do most of the apprenticeship work that you had to have both a contract for employment and a contract for training. And as part of that contract for training, you got access uh, to training at the TAFE system. And I'm going back, and I don't, don't want to tell you how far back it is that I started my apprenticeship, but it's half a century when I started my apprenticeship. And I've got to tell you, I had better conditions and better support from my employer 50 years ago than a lot of the kids get now. I just think that's outrageous. You know, my I got uh, paid to travel to TAFE. I got paid for the day, you know, the time I took off. And that's because there was strong trade unions in there, in, the, in Scotland, making sure that apprentices get looked after. So I'd like to get back to some of that approach uh, here. In the TAFE system, there was never any thought that my employer would send me to a private RTO. There was no such thing as a private RTO in Scotland. Everything went through that TAFE system, uh, as did as happened here. And I think one of the big failures uh, has been that, you know, both uh, 
Labour and Liberal parties have been sort of, you know, caught up in this argument that competition policy, privatisation in the market can fix all the problems. All you've got to do if you've got a problem at TAFE, you'll make TAFE more efficient if you subject them to competition. You'll make TAFE more efficient if the market has got a say in what's going on. Well, you look at the TAFE system now and you see what's left, the remnants of the, the, the strong internationally recognised TAFE system that we had here, that's all gone in the context of being, being a fundamental aspect of training in this country. It's that now people have got a choice to send you to some American RTO uh, that want to make a profit, that want to make a profit out of the, the training. And I used to, I mean, the first TAFE I was engaged in uh, in, uh, in uh, Australia was the Musselbrook TAFE. I was the local or organiser um, uh, for the Metal Workers Union back in the early 80s. So I did some work with the local TAFE system to get them access to some of the better technology that was available in the mining industry. The TAFE have never, all, have never been a, a, an area where everything was there that you needed. But, uh, you know, up in Musselbrook TAFE, kids were being taught in some old uh, tractor that had been pulled out of a swamp somewhere in the Hunter Valley. And we actually managed to talk to the, the local mining industry to get them access to the best uh, technology. These are issues that are, you know, have always been there. It's never been perfect, but it has been far better than the position we're in now, in my view. So Labour has said strongly and unequivocally that we support the TAFE system that the two-thirds of all federal government funding will go to the TAFE system. That we want to rebuild the TAFE system, we see that as the best thing to do. Because TAFE is not just about apprentices, it's about trainees, and it's also about young people coming out of the education system, like I was, uh, not, uh, not uh, w w with no skills to actually get uh, going. And the TAFE system uh, that I remember was the TAFE system that actually helped young people that didn't do well at school, got them in, got them their, their, their certificates and allowed them to rebuild their lives. That's what TAFE did for me. It also was important, I think, in the context of some older uh, citizens who, you know, have retired, they're looking for, you know, some, something to keep them occupied and TAFE was excellent, certainly in, in, the, in the regional communities, about providing skills and computers, you know, lead lighting, you know, a anything that w was there to help people get ahead, uh, and not financially, but just socially. Uh, TAFE was important for that as well. So we understand the importance of TAFE, and that's why I've got a specific responsibility as a shadow minister for TAFE. So we've said, that we will reinvest in TAFE. As I said, that the 637.6 million have been cut uh, from TAFE recently by this government. About $3 billion has gone out of TAFE across the networks uh, over uh, a period of time. Uh, we've said we will make sure that two thirds of all funding goes to TAFE. We'll guarantee that. And that is getting some pushback, I've got to tell you, from the private RTOs. And I'm just not prepared to accept that a private RTO that is in there on a for-profit motive, it's about the profit for the shareholders, uh, should be getting government funding when we've got an organisation that is a not-for-profit organisation that should be at the forefront of education and training in this country, that has proved its worth over the years. They are the organisations that should be funded. Now, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Um, there, there is a huge vested interest out there and I spoke to some of the RTOs last week and I've got to tell you, I don't think I get many claps uh, but I laid it out to them that we were not prepared for the rip-offs to continue we were not prepared to have a situation where all the easy courses for delivery uh, were simply in the private RTOs and the TAFE system was left with the, the, the courses that required technology, the recourse, courses that required a lot of investment, and then they were not getting properly funded because the money was going into the private RTO system and TAFE was left struggling. That is unacceptable to a federal Labour Party. 
So we are very, very keen to make sure that TAFE is rebuilt. We've also said that we will invest $100 uh, million into the TAFE system. <coughs> and that $100 million will be to, <coughs> to invest in rebuilding TAFEs and some of the technology that's needed. We've already made commitments to put state-of-the-art welding machines in some TAFEs. We've made commitments to put in virtual hospital wards and TAFEs so that uh, you know, people are, can get access to the best technology. So we're going to invest $100 million. We've also said that we will do 100,000 uh, TAFEs. We'll pay the fees for 100,000 students across uh, the country to make sure that TAFE gets, uh, gets the volume uh, that's needed. We said that uh, we will expand pre-apprenticeship programs for job seekers, and we'll, 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 we'll do about uh, I think about ten thousand uh, pre-apprentices, and we'll do about twenty thousand uh, twenty thousand uh, adult apprenticeships for people changing out of one area to another. So we we are really keen to make sure that TAFE is the fundamental position. Uh, for training in this country. We're also saying that we need to have a good look at the whole VET system and the education system. That's the post-secondary post, uh, school system. So only a few weeks ago we announced that uh, we will do this uh, significant uh, review. There's not been a review of vocational education and training for some like 40 years. I think the Kangan report was the last one that was done. So we have said that we'll have a look at this. We have Obviously, for you know practical reasons, we've consulted with the unions, we've consulted with um, uh, with business. Uh, I know it created some some uh, concern uh, among some of the the unions that we didn't have all the unions there. Uh, but uh, you know, you just you you've just got to get ahead and do this stuff. And I've got to say, Stuart was quite vocal. And his uh, uh, conversations with me on on the role that PSA plays in the TAFE system. So we are we are aware uh, of that role, and we respect that role. And, we, and I, you know, and I've worked with Stuart over the years, and I thoroughly respect his, uh, you know, uh, capacity and his skills in this area. So we are prepared to work with you. That review will set up some broad-based um, guidelines about how that would would work. We would, and when, when we win government, we can win government. Don't listen to the Australian newspaper. We can win government because we've got the best policies. Uh, we've got the best people out there. We get people that understand the working class in this country and make sure that we do the right thing. And we've got to ensure that we don't hand $80 billion of tax cuts to the big end of town with $17 billion going, going to the uh, and we've got to make sure that, you know, that we properly fund TAFE, we properly fund education, we properly fund health. The important issues, there is no point, there is absolutely no point in uh, giving tax cuts to business if their employees have got nowhere to live, if they're getting sick because they're living in crowded accommodation, if you've got older women couch surfing, you know, with no access to, to a, a roof over their head. So that's the other area I've got, housing and homelessness, and I'm sure that we can play a role uh, in making sure that housing and homelessness is dealt with as well. These are the important issues for working people in this country, and that review will be an important aspect of Labour's work in the first 100 days. Uh, we'll, we'll start it up in the first 100 days uh, of our election to government, because we need to get rid of this government. You've only got to look at what they're doing now. They're trying to divide the community. And unfortunately, that does resonate with some areas in the community. You know, blaming, you know, migrants for every problem in the community, blaming refugees for every problem, blaming, you know, your know, African uh, immigrants into the country for a, a, a supposed crime wave. Uh, you know, this is just unacceptable. It's not, we, we are not just an economy. We've got to have a decent society. And that's what Labour is about. And that's why we are... And, and that's why we say part of building that good society, part of building a decent society, is having a strong, effective TAFE system, right? Because the TAFE system can do a lot of work across a whole range of areas, 
educating people and the higher, the better education we've got in this country, the more internationally competitive we are, the better resources we have uh, across communities. These are important issues for us. And I think one of the, I've just left the uh, CF, uh, sorry, I just left CBUS uh, around the corner and they were giving me the results of, uh, of a survey they've done where young apprentices in the TAVE system just don't, uh, about a third of them are not getting paid their superannuation. Yeah. Right? So these are issues that are all about, you know, saying you've got a strong, you know, safety net in theory, but not having a practical way to ensure that that safety net is implemented. So, you know, we, we were in government, we'll need to have some, you know, fairly straight talking discussions with the state governments about TAFE. Uh, we would want to use the COAG process to rebuild TAFE across the country. Uh, we think that having a focus on skills and vocational education system across the country is good for the community and it's good for our international competitiveness. And you know, we've got these uh, private RTOs that have been in there ripping the guts out, making you know, millions and millions of dollars of profit, ending up going belly up and leaving t the TAFE system to pick up the pieces. You know? So I don't have any sympathy uh, for those that argue that competition policy in the market will fix all the problems in the, in the uh, vocational education system. It just won't. So we want to work with the PSA, we want to work with the ACTU and the other unions, we want to work with business in the context of rebuilding TAFE to make sure that we've got a fantastic TAFE system. One of the key areas that I'm concerned about is that no one measures the amount of investment that employers make in the VET system in this country to train young people. There is no capacity anywhere in federal or state governments to know what employers are putting in. And I'm sick and tired of some employers, every time I meet them, it's what can the government do for us. Well, the German system is that the employers invest in their employees, uh, they get highly skilled employees, and they say that after a, a young employee in Germany has finished their vocational education, within 12 months, they have recouped the investment that they've made over that apprenticeship that those young kids have been involved in. So that's not the culture in Australia, and we need to look at this, because without the employers uh, sending their kids to TAFE, sending their apprentices and employees to TAFE, TAFE is diminished. So we want to look at all of these areas. That inquiry is going to be really important, and we will make sure that we consult and engage with the PSA in relation to the inquiries. I'm happy to take questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I'm Steve. I'm from the, uh, Newcastle. Um, so I appreciate your comments about the Hunter and, uh, and Northbrook. I know that camp as well. Yeah. Um, and I really do appreciate your comments about, about TAFE. I just want to bring up right up front you know, the elephant oh. in the room, <laughs> and that's um, and you know and I heard you talk about the billions of dollars that have been taken away out of TAFE. Yeah, I, we're right on the same page there. And I heard you talk about putting a hundred million dollars in, but it's it was the Gillard government, unfortunately, that actually brought in the changes. And I, I, I guess you're on that you're on our side, but I'm just wondering, you know, do you have all of the colleagues in the parliamentary parli parliament? on side that you can actually get through this change and actually start to really properly fund yeah. TAFE. The whole question of VET loans, yeah. it's just a real a real disaster. And, and I'll just finally add, our union's position is 100%. Uh, appreciate your 66%, our union's position is 100%. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, there's a surprise. <laughs> um, look, I... Uh, Look, in, in terms of Labour's commitment, I've got to tell you, you know, Bill Shorten is totally committed to this and he's been <laughs> extremely uh, good in, in supporting this. The people that are, uh, you know, are the ones that can make and break some of the policies are the, uh, the, the finance ministers and Chris Bowen is su very supportive, Jim Chalmers is very supportive. Uh, you know, all it, we understand how important the TAFE system is for not only you know, building a good society, but to build a strong economy, right? 
and uh, so we, are, we understand these issues. Everyone's on board. There's been pu public commitments made. Tanya Plibersek, who is uh, the uh, Minister for Education, who I, so I am under Tanya in terms of some of these portfolio issues, she's been fantastic. You know, Tanya has been great uh, in terms of the support for this inquiry and support for the TAFE system. So you've got every key cabinet, shadow cabinet minister in the Labour Party supportive of this. Uh, we are not just, and it, it's very popular with the public, you know? And that's not bad for a political policy, <laughs> yeah. I tell you. You know, the public understand the importance of the TAFE system. You know, millions of workers uh, have been to TAFE. So it's not hard to get to a meeting and somebody understands the importance of TAFE. But the big complexity in this has been the state and federal relationships. We need to work with the states. We need to make sure that the states are on side and, and, and delivering on this. And the inquiry will be extremely important to deliver the analysis and then the arguments about why we need to invest more in TAFE, more in universities to get a highly skilled economy. Because what we are faced with at the moment is some of the some of the analysis I've seen uh, from PwC uh, is one that I mentioned in a speech I did last week, and if you want to go to my website, you'll you'll find the speech. Some of the analysis that they are saying is that uh, you know employers should look at a different method of employment, and that different method should be you, that you should look at your 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 skills base. If you don't have the skills and people are not there, well, one of the things you can do is get rid of them. You know, they don't say it in those terms, but that's what it means. You know, behind all the the PwC talk, basically they say if they, if they, they don't have the skills, get rid of them. They don't say train them up, right? They don't say put on more apprentices. They say what you can use is contractors. What you can use is the gig economy. My goodness, the gig economy. And if that's what we're going to be faced with, we are in real trouble. In real trouble. My view is that we need to make sure that we regulate that gig economy so that people get decent wages and decent conditions because they're workers. And, that, you know, and that's, a, that's an important issue. So the PwC report, in my view, so it shows where the employers will go because it's low cost. They don't have to accept any responsibility for training. But what the PwC report doesn't say, where are these trained workers going to come from? You know, when I came here in 1973, the major employers of apprentices, apprentices and skilled workers uh, that were being trained as apprentices and cadet engineers and the like, electricians, they were the, uh, the public sector. Mm. You know, I worked in the Electricity Commission. We always had a lot of apprentices getting good training in the commission. The railways did the training. Some major private employers did a lot of training as well, like BHP. They're all gone. That training is gone. Where does PwC think these skilled workers are going to come from? Well, I'll tell you where they think they're going to come from. Important skilled labor from overseas. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. just can't be a client nation for skilled workers. We've got to train our skilled workers, make sure our skilled workers are there. And that's why labor understands the importance of this. That's why Bill Shorten, Chris Bowen, Tanya Plibersek, Jim Chalmers, the shadow cabinet, and as a whole, understand the importance of TAFE. Thanks, Doug, for coming on board with us. Um, TAFE has been spruiking um, how they value staff and that uh, staff are our best asset. Um, we've seen enormous number of staff reductions, and um, I just wanted to ask how will Labor make people, make TAFE people focused again rather than dollar? Well, we don't run TAFE, but we are not without influence in terms of our federal government. And already when, you know, we made the announcement that we would put 100,000, we'd pay the fees for 100,000, then guess what? The New South Wales government starts to move into that area. Other state governments move in. So I think we've started successfully to get a focus on the TAFE system. And, and, and when you do that, you, then you've got to have respect for the workers that are, that are in there. The advice I'm getting is that some of the problems that we'll need to deal with in this, uh, 
in this inquiry, uh, and then you're not the TAFE teachers. I know you're the you're the, the you know the administrative the staff, and you're the support staff. And without you guys, TAFE can't work. So you are really important as well. But you know the TAFE teachers, when you look at the, the mm -hmm. issue for them, uh, we've got a situation where um, the competency-based standards have meant that some of the skills uh, and some of what's called the pedagogy, that's how you train people, how you educate people, has diminished. We want to have a look at that in this inquiry as well. And I remember when, you know, when I was the Assistant State Secretary of the Metal Workers, then the Assistant National Secretary, then the Secretary, uh, you know, I would talk to some of my you know, support staff in that ed in that training area, and I thought they spoke a different bloody language from me at times. You know, it's now become an industry in itself. It's become, a, you know, a language. You know that unless you've been there all this time, then you're sort of on the outside. We need to try and break that down, because you know I know it's it's a very complex thing training people properly. But uh, I've been having this debate with a few of my ex-colleagues about how important are these competency standards. If it means that it takes years to develop competency standards to meet the, 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 the skills that are in the emerging economy, then they're not working properly. Mm -hmm. And what I argued, uh, you know, when I supported the, the introduction of the competency-based standards, people like Laurie Carmichael, uh, we had a view that if you got the competency standards in and you had them in the awards, then when you would get paid for the skills. Now with the diminution of enterprise bargaining, which is a huge problem, then this issue of the competency standards <laughs> giving you the capacity to move up a skills path is gone. Right? So we understand that as well. And that's why Brendan O'Connor and you know, Bill Shorten have said that we'll have a look at the IR system in the context of, uh, of where it's going. And when I first came, I'll just say this briefly, when I first came to Sydney, I think I came in about 1981, uh, the Metal Workers Union that I was the Assistant State Secretary of could, along with the other metals unions, it was called the MTFU, we'd have a meeting at Redfern Oval. We'd have meetings at uh, Lincoln Oval. We'd have 10 and 15,000 workers there, right? If we had a delegates meeting, you could bring three and 400 delegates from across you know, the Sydney metropolitan area to talk about where we go. And under the current system, you would not be able to get superannuation. You would not have achieved shorter hours because you'd be focused simply at the individual enterprise. And I've been arguing within the party that that is just not achievable anymore. So you can't get you can't get workers saying here's something we want to achieve across our industry because enterprise bargain focuses you to look at the toes of your shoes. You never look up and see what's happening anywhere else. So there are issues with enterprise bargaining. We'll need to address them in government. It's not my portfolio area, but anyone that will listen to me, I say that you know, pattern bargaining, the capacity to bargain across an industry is important because nobody can tell me the employers don't pattern bargain. I mean, you know, you see what happens. You know, the, the, the TAFE, TAFE will look, I think this is how it works in New South Wales, but TAFE will make some, some corporate decisions and impose them on bargaining across the whole TAFE system. The federal government makes corporate decisions about how it's, how it's going to bargain at the, end, at the enterprise level, and they push that across. So the employers part and bargain, if we part and bargain, we're in breach of the act. So these are also issues that we need to deal with. So I think there's lots of challenges for a Labour government, and what I'd be saying to TAFE teachers, that you know what we need from you guys, if this is all gonna happen, we need your support at the next election to be out there making sure that that weak Prime Minister, that jellyback of a Prime Minister we've got, Malcolm Turnbull, is gone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so we, need to, we, we need to start you know, working uh, with the trade union movement uh, to actually get a change of government because all the things I've been talking about now will never happen, will never happen under a Liberal government. And you know, it was only last week uh, uh, the, uh, the minister uh, was in talking about 
the market is still going to be the driving force in the debt system, that they're not going to impose any limitations on the RTOs. They think that the market can fix the educational problems in this country, and they are so wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.